everybody. I'm Kimberly Turner from cookingwithkimberly.com and tonight I'm going to show you how to bake truffle shells and cheese. So this is mac and cheese but made with a beautiful truffle flavor. I'm going to be using some uh, Napa Valley truffle infused oil blend and this has such an exquisite taste of truffle. It's very concentrated. It's more of a finishing oil than a cooking oil so I'm going to be using this at the end of the recipe and that's all you need is a little tiny bit to get a whole lot of flavor. So let's get started on this on these shells and you can see how we're going to do this. On my stove top, I have a large frying pan and I have about a tablespoon of olive oil in it. I'm going to add to that a tablespoon of butter. Let that melt and combine through and we're going to create a roux. That's going to help us make a beautiful cheese sauce for our shells. So I'm using some large shells today. This is 900 grams of shells and that's what these guys look like, okay? So you could use any kind of shaped pasta you want, the short kinds. You can use penne, you could use fazili, you could use macaroni, you could use whatever it is you like, okay? I have a large pot on my stove top with about a couple teaspoons of sea salt and a bay leaf. It has come to a boil and I'm going to get these guys boiled up, okay? So into the water they go a whole large bag. Bring that pasta back up to a boil and then turn it down to a simmer and let it go until it's an al dente texture. We're going to be adding liquid to this and it's going to be a baked pasta in the oven. So you don't want to have it too mushy now. Some people like really, really soft pasta. I like mine pretty, you know, al dente. So I'm going to just leave them on the more hard side. Then you're going to put the sauce on. It's going to kind of absorb a little bit more liquid. So don't fret if you underdo it a little bit. I love using shells for mac and cheese because they have a tendency to really scoop up a lot of cheese inside of them. They're just a nice shape to hold a bunch of sauce. So we're going to be adding flour to this and we're going to make a blonde roux, a very light colored roux because we're using cheese and it's going to be truffly. It all wants, I want it to be all a light color, okay? So we're going to use a blonde roux, which means it doesn't have to go very far. What you want to do is just cook out your flour. So you're looking to use equal parts oil or fat to flour. So I have the butter and the olive oil and I'm using about a third of a cup of flour. I like to use to make my roux a little bit thicker on the thicker side. Some people like it really runny as they're cooking it. I like mine to be kind of like a paste. Roux need to be baby fat. You don't want them to burn. And you don't want things to be clumpy. So make sure that you could evenly mix the flour and the oils. So there's no lumps or clumps. Once I get it all combined, I like to kind of even it out on the bottom of the pan and let that flour taste cook out of it. A couple minutes. Don't let it burn, don't let it stick. I'm gonna do a preliminary seasoning. Uh, we're going to also finish seasoning it, at, seasoning it at the end so that you can have a good taste and, and know exactly what's going on. So I'm just kind of giving it a foundation of flavor. I put about a teaspoon of freshly ground pepper, a couple dashes of cayenne pepper, and a little bit of sea salt. Now don't add too much salt now because you're gonna be adding cheese and cheese has a little bit of salt in there. So you don't wanna overdo it either. Stir those seasonings around. So you're gonna cook that flour taste out and you want it to go, you don't want it to go to a peanut butter color, that's too far, okay? Just blonde and we're good to go. Now let's talk about liquids. You're gonna start adding liquids slowly but surely, a little bit at a time, like maybe a third of a cup at first and then you're gonna mix it in completely with this roux going on here uh, until everything, there's no lumps, no clumps. Then you're gonna add a little bit more and each time you add a little bit more and combine it, you can add more and more and more. So all together, I don't know exactly how much I'm going to need. We're just going to wing it and you're gonna see how thick it is. You're, every day you do it, it's gonna be different anyway. So I have a combination of some liquids here that I wanna use. I have some buttermilk, I've got some regular milk, I'm gonna use the rest of our cream, and I have some chicken stock. That's going to ensure a nice flavorful cheese sauce. And I also have four cups of cheese, two cups of a medium or um, strong um, cheddar, and then I have the rest mozzarella. I want to kind of keep the flavor profile kind of neutral because the truffle is what I want to really stand out in this dish. Make sure you're stirring your pasta so they don't stick together while you're cooking. So this roux looks like it's about done. That should be good to go. 
It's light in color still, you can see, but that flavor is going to have cooked out. Once you start smelling anything a little bit nutty, that's when you need to start adding liquid. So I'm gonna start actually with some milk first. A little bit of milk. Stir that completely through. Let that incorporate completely. It's going to just soak up the liquid like a sponge. You'll see, just keep stirring it and then everything will be the same consistency again. And that's when you add more liquid, okay? Surprisingly, buttermilk only is 1% milk fat, which is actually less than what most people drink milk wise. Um, it's way less than cream and it has a nice creamy texture, a nice thick texture, and also a little bit of a tang like sour cream. That's going to be nice in there. You can see that my roux is really soaking up the liquid. It's still a paste thick and it's expanding. Each time I'm adding just a little bit more liquid. Now adding liquid is gonna continue on until you get a nice consistency sauce. So, you know, eyeball it. You know what kind of creamy, cheesy sauce it's supposed to look like. You want it a little bit runnier because you're going to add four cups of cheese and that's gonna really thicken up your cheese sauce. So thin this uh, roux out quite a bit. I'm not gonna show it all to you until I get there. All right, I've probably added three cups of the buttermilk and the cream and the milk all together, and I'm probably gonna add two cups or so of the chicken stock. I'm getting there. My sauce has really increased in volume. Here, there you go, it smells amazing. Now this dish in particular is not something you're gonna eat on the regular. This is a very decadent mac and cheese uh, recipe. Something for maybe Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, Father's Day, maybe a birthday, or even like Christmas or something special like that where you would make that. Maybe Thanksgiving, Easter. Truffle is a very luxurious ingredient. They're very expensive uh, little mushrooms that special kind of pig actually root out of the woodlands in Europe. And um, you know, not everybody can get those fresh ones or even dried ones. So we're using the infused oil and that's really going to help us get a truffle flavor without having to purchase such a high priced ingredient and hard to find too. Now this oil comes from a line of infused oil blends. Uh, this is just one of them and they have other ones too of nut, maybe macadamia, they have the pistachio and they also have walnut and the truffle. Absolutely fantastic. Every single one of them imparts so much flavor. It, ex it allows you to do some more adventurous things in your kitchen without having to break the bank. This is going to last a long time, this bottle. That's fantastic. Um, so make sure you check them out. They're available from winecountrykitchens.com online. What a fantastic place to shop as a foodie. I'm telling you what. Don't forget about your pasta boiling. I'm preheating my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and I have a large casserole or baking dish and I have sprayed it just with some spray. You could also just go like that with some olive oil if you wanted to. So have that prepared, just a little bit more and I think we're right where we need to be. Now I'm gonna keep some liquid out still. Uh, after I add my cheese, it might get thicker than I expect and then I can just thin it out with a little bit more maybe chicken stock. So I'm ready to add my cheese. This looks fantastic. My shells are nearly done, just a little bit underdone. In goes the cheese. I'm putting two cups in and I'm saving two cups for the top of my mac and cheese to bake it. Stir that all in. It's gonna thicken it up. It's going to melt all in there. My shells are ready, let's drain them. I'm gonna add just a little bit more chicken stock. And we're gonna do a taste test. This cheese sauce looks fantastic. The cheese is all melted in. Look at how nice and thick that is. It's gorgeous. Let's do a quick taste test. Also, your chicken stock is salty, so don't over salt. You can always salt at the end. Oh boy, that is awesome already. And we haven't even added the truffle yet. Okay. Well, give those shells a good shake because they tend to harbor quite a bit of liquid, just like they will the sauce. Okay. 
I always like to put these guys back into the pot for a second. And I'm gonna add just a little bit more butter and to coat them. Okay, just melt that in there. Not a lot, maybe a tablespoon. Just like you would with olive oil if you were doing a pasta dish, an Italian pasta dish. Again, this is not low fat or gluten free or anything good like that. It's all this cheesy goodness in here, okay? This is for a cheat day. All right, here we go. Shells into the casserole dish. Beautiful. I like to wait till the very end before I add the truffle, before the last moment I possibly can. We're gonna add about a teaspoon's worth. That's like all you need. This is so much flavor. Stir that through that cheese sauce so that it will totally encompass these shells. We're gonna do a final taste test one more time with the truffle oil in there. I'll probably add a little bit more pepper. You could use white pepper if you are worried about aesthetics. Cayenne, a little bit of cayenne. Stir that all through. All right, final taste. Oh, that's delicious. Okay, that tastes fantastic. Mum has approved of it, and we're ready to do this. So pour your cheese sauce all over your shells. Don't waste a lick of this. This would also be a great uh, dish for tailgating, something special. A more upscale tailgating party? Maybe you're watching Polo or Cricket on TV. <laughs> okay, and I'm just going to kind of use my paddle and stir that through so that all those shells get a little bit of this sauce. You want to completely coat them. Oh, look at this. What a treat. Now, if you could get your hands on some uh, fresh truffle, it would be fantastic to just shave that over top of it right before serving. But um, that's, we don't have to do that tonight. I say that about tailgating because that's what we're doing. We're tailgating with this. <laughs> oh, that's delicious. And those shells are just gonna soak up this fantastic sauce. It's gonna be creamy and delicious. All right, so kind of flatten them out on the top of it. I'm gonna use my remaining cheese to sprinkle all over the top. This is going to kind of get a little bit of color. It's gonna melt on the top too and kind of seal in some more of the liquid. If you wanna add more, go ahead and add more. The cheese police will not come after you, I promise. I am gonna add just a little bit more. Ooh, I would be really happy someone made this for me for Valentine's. All right, into the oven it goes on 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 20 minutes, okay? And oh, this looks awesome. Look at that, oh, come on. You want that sauce to kind of have absorbed into the pasta, as well as that cheese to melt and get a little bit browned and bubbly on the top too. All right, my shells and cheese have been going for about 25 minutes. They look beautiful. I have a little bit of brownness going on. Everything's ooey gooey and bubbly. But what I'm doing is I just put it under the broiler on high. I'm gonna watch it like a hawk for the next minute or maybe two. I just want it to get a little bit more brown on the top and we're ready to eat. So get ready with your bowls or plates. I believe it's ready to go. Let's grab it. That looks beautiful. I don't wanna brown it too much either on the top. I just want it a little bit brown. Let me show you how beautiful this looks. The smell in here is amazing. It smells thoroughly of truffle. Beautiful, what a luxurious mac and cheese. Let's serve up a bowl. Do you wanna try some on me? Mm -hmm. You want a bowl of this? Mm -hmm. I need a glove. Ooh, it's hot. Look at that. Oh, come on. All this gooey goodness. Are you kidding me right now? Look at that. Look at this glorious side dish, whether you're using it as a side dish or as a main. Who knows? You might be vegetarian and this might be like a whole entree. Awesome stuff. You've got the little brown bits of cheese. It's ooey gooey goodness in here. The rest of the shells are nice and creamy. Look at that. Ooh. I'm going to take a bite of these and then give it to you. <laughs> Mm. Oh, mom. Oh, you're gonna like that, mom. Mmm. Mmm. I am in heaven. If you thought mac and cheese was good, 
add some truffle oil to it and you've got something completely different. Boy, that's good. The cheese on the top is a little bit crispy from the brown bits and then you get them nice and gooey. The cheese is a little bit tangy because we added the buttermilk to the sauce. The truffle really shines through and that's what I want it to be. However, it's not overpowering. You don't want to add too much because truffle can definitely overwhelm you if it's just too much. Um, the shells have really soaked up a lot of the, the sauces inside the shells just waiting for you to devour. It's all creamy and delicious. We had just the right amount of sauce. Perfect. I love this. This is an A1 recipe. You like that? Mm. <laughs> Make sure you check out winecountrykitchens.com online for this amazing oil that makes everything so much better, <laughs> as well as their other oils, uh, the macadamia and the pistachio and the walnut. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, this is um, canola oil with extra virgin olive oil and white truffle essence. Boy, the essence of truffle really makes this dish amazing. So that's how you do it, folks. That's how you bake truffle shells and cheese. I am about to eat myself a giant bowl of this. It's going to be amazing. I hope you enjoy tailgating or Valentine's or whatever special occasion you're making this. Or maybe it's just a Wednesday night. Who knows? All right, check out Wine Country Kitchens. You're going to love their products. Follow me on Twitter at Cooking with Kim E with a capital E. Like the fan page at Facebook.com slash Cooking with Kimberly. My shows are on iFood.tv slash Cooking with Kimberly. YouTube.com slash Cooking with Kimberly. You can also find my channel on Roku called Cooking with Kimberly. And I'm also syndicated on Apple TV. Come to my website at CookingWithKimberly.com and subscribe. Interact with us and let us know what's going down in your culinary world. All right? Be a champion in your kitchen. Eat deliciously. Bye. Yummy, Mom. Mm -hmm.